Hello, Hope Church family. I'm doing the welcoming this week, which I'm very excited to do because I'm so used to doing it in person and I haven't had a chance yet to do it. So welcome. I wish I could see you. And I believe all of you wish you could see each other or at least the people that take care of our hair. But we are glad that we can have service together this week again. I'm so thankful for all the amount of people. You don't get to see it, but there are a lot of people doing stuff behind the scenes and the filming and the editing, mainly Liz and Will. But we are so excited for everybody that um, is doing this and so thankful for you tuning in every week as we continue to be a family just virtually. We are very much looking forward to getting together again in person. And I wish I could tell you when that will be, but we don't know yet. I wanted to start off, as I, I try to normally do, in the book of Psalms just to focus our hearts and focus on coming together to worship. And yes, it is different when you're at home or when you're in the car, wherever it is that you're doing service right now. But I wanted to focus our hearts together as we join together to worship our God, to focus on singing songs. And I really hope you sing these songs out loud wherever you are and listening to God's word that it would just penetrate our hearts and that it would make the changes necessary so that when we do come back together, we are changed people because of what God has done in our lives. I want to read from Psalm 57, just the first couple verses. Psalm 57, verse 1. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me, he sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. Our prayer is that during this time that you are feeling God's love, that you're feeling his comfort, that you're feeling his faithfulness in the midst of crisis. Now I hope that you are somewhere comfortable. I really want you to sing so loud that we can hear you from our homes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for this time that we get to come together and worship you. And although we can't be together, Lord, I pray that you have your spirit work in us so that we can feel the unity in doing church together, in worshiping you together. Lord, I pray that as we do this service, that it would be heartfelt, that it would be real, that you would... Let us feel your spirit working in us, convicting us, changing us, and allowing you to turn us in to the people that you want us to be. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
world, Lord. But God, we also know that you are in control. You are sovereign, God. Nothing is outside of your hand, Lord. And so we can gather in our homes all around the world and declare that you are worthy of our song. You are worthy of our praise because you are God. Jesus, we love you and we praise your name. And we just ask that you be glorified, that you would reveal yourself to us right where we are, God, as we hear from your word. Lord, that you would change us from the inside. Have your way, Lord. It is in your holy name we pray. Amen. This evening, we're going to be talking about why we serve. And I wanted to start off by reading Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 23. It says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. You've probably heard me talk about these verses before. Because the spur is meant to really force the horse to do something it wouldn't naturally do. This evening we're talking about why we serve. The verse in Hebrews says we should spur each other on towards love and good deeds. Spur each other on towards service for the kingdom. Now, I've asked Will Davis to speak tonight on purpose. I've known Will for over 12 years. Will is a very, very close friend of mine. If it's something that's true about Will and his wife, Sarah, is they serve. Will and Sarah have never taken a paycheck from Hope Church, but they love to serve. They do so many things that you never see or will never know that they're the ones doing them. They never complain. They do it full of joy, and they do it with faithfulness. So it's by no accident that I've asked Will to talk about why we serve. And just as I said last week, I didn't ask Will to study up on it and regurgitate it to you. I asked Will to speak from his heart. I as well to give his and Sarah's personal theology behind why they do what they do. Here's Will. Hey church, so Rob asked me to speak on service, why I serve, why we serve, and why we get to serve. And so I began by breaking down and evaluating really my worldview uh, and my testimony. So. As you hear this, not only can you join me in this journey, but also I know some of you will definitely keep me accountable. For sure, both of our Jose's and Brother Chris will. And I'm very much appreciative of that. But let me open up in prayer, and then we're going to jump into Philippians chapter 4. Father God, thanks so much for this time. Um, Lord, for honestly giving us a story that we can share. Father God, for writing out a testimony that speaks of your glory and allowing us to walk in that, a journey that relates to so many different people that come into our paths of life. Father God, for your grace, for your mercy, for your faithfulness, and for your love. We thank you, I pray for the people who are gonna listen uh, to these words and that uh, really they're not just my words, Father God, but that through my story, your words uh, speak life and speak truth and encouragement into those that are listening and watching this evening. And we're just, we're just thankful for you, Jesus. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So back to my worldview. I asked myself three questions. <clears throat> the first one was, what stirs a person to good works? What stirs a person to good works? And I literally went down and I wrote out some words. They were value, worth, drive, will, passion, devotion, dedication, honor, respect, love. And then I went and I asked myself a second question. What do these words, this word bank that I just created, what do they affect? And I think it's twofold. Inwardly, they change the spirit. It renews the mind. It compels even. And then outwardly, it nurtures or shapes, challenges, motivates. And the neat thing is that the effect and the change isn't one or the other, but it's both and. They both happen simultaneously. From there, I then ask myself a third question. It's our last question tonight. And it's, what distinguishes 
mere charitable works from kingdom service. What distinguishes mere charitable works from kingdom service? And I really had to resonate and allow that to resonate within me because I know of better charities, devoted, respectful time managers, and even sacrificial givers that would put me to shame. And maybe yourself. And some of these organizations are better than church. So what makes us different than just mere charitable services? And I think the distinctive, the only distinctive difference between these acts of service by an unbeliever and a child of God is just faith. I don't want to downplay it and just say it's just faith, but really, it's faith. Faith in Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus has written and completed a spiritual work that is trustworthy and rooted in integrity. And then he says, here you go. Work it out. Make it your own. I've written a story of your life that's going to tell of my faithfulness. So back to our list of words. If Jesus is then of the utmost in value, as believers claim and believe, right, of utmost in honor, deserving of our utmost devotion, respect, will, passion, and love, the question is how then are we exemplifying that in our lives? What compels you and I to strive and do more? So when we think about and talk about serving, serving or service is a faith attitude. Serving is a faith meter. It's a gauge. Growing up, my parents would say, well, my mom would say that it's my dad's quote, but either way, the statement was, the gospel according to Nike. Just do it. And as a kid, it didn't fully make sense, but subconsciously, it nurtured an attitude of, it's what we do. And uh, as a favorite professor of mine once said, he said, because life is for service. So let me break that down a little bit. Nike, a top-notch brand and viewed as the pinnacle of sports gear, athletic wear, and, and sponsorship, they, they write up and create a finished product that's trustworthy and rooted in integrity so that you and I, we, the consumer, can take those tools and just do it. Do what? Live a life of active participation, of training, of fitness, of better athletics, right? An active life with no excuses because they've given us the tools to be able to live an active life. So service is a faith attitude and serving is a faith meter. And so when we look at Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, the pinnacle of faith living and glory to the Father, when we look at that, he has given us the tools to live out an active faith. I think too often we fall into the mindset of false humility, which then leads to pride. I don't think pride is always the first stumbling block. I really think that it's a false humility. And by false humility, I mean a timid spirit, which really is unbecoming of a believer and not an attribute of God. Timidity is a false God. Second Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7, Paul says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Or some translations say sound judgment. So power. Power is position. It's leadership. It's authority. Love, love is compassion, it's care, it's being with people. And then sound judgment or self-discipline that, that draws us or, or moves us to rely on him. And then let's take a look at verse 6, because Paul rose into verse 7 out of verse 6. He says, therefore, I remind you to keep ablaze, fan the flame, the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. And I love that 
translation to set ablaze. You know that a bonfire is not timid. When it's lit, it says, here I am. Tread lightly, but I'm here for everybody's benefit. Enjoy my presence. So when I say false humility, I mean we walk about not wanting to be seen or heard or to cause a ripple because of what others may say or think. It paralyzes us. Dare I say it makes us useless in kingdom growth. Breathe with me. Just take a breath because that was a lot. I'm not treading in the world of personalities and gifting. That's not what this is about. It's about an attitude. It's about conviction. It's about motivation. Serving in the kingdom and for the king is about a heart check. It's a mindset. And it shouldn't be built on how others will see us, but how God sees you and how God gives you your worth how God is honored by our work. Last week, Greg read out of Philippians chapter 2. I want to bring up a few verses. Philippians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16, he says, For it is God who is working in you, enabling you to desire and to work out his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing, so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world. Hold firmly to the message of life. Then I can boast in the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing, or in vain, as some translations say. When I read those verses, these verses are not timid. It's big talk because we serve a big God who deserves a big commitment to the expansion of his kingdom. So take a step back. Let's breathe again. Right? This is where divine false or fail-safes come in. I love it because I, I kind of, I, I read those things and I might get anxious, right? I might get hot under the collar, but divine fail safes. God knows we will fail, so he extends mercy. God knows we're going to lose steam, so he extends grace. But we're still called to press on. So Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And I'll interrupt myself as we read. But Paul starts off in verse 4. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. I love that because rejoicing is an outward expression of an inner working. So people will hear and people will see. And they should. Because we have something to rejoice about. Verse 5 says, let your graciousness be known to everyone. Paul says, people got to know, people got to see. Serving is a faith attitude. Verse 6, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When anxiety and trepidation hits, bring it before the Lord. How often do others hear of our anxieties and our worries first, and then we vacillate whether or not to tell God? Which is why Paul, he continues uh, that statement, and he says, the peace of God will surpass every thought, meaning that everybody else's opinion doesn't matter. The peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus says, come to me with your timidity, with your anxiety, with your unbalanced pride. I will align your hearts and I'll guard it. And then verse eight, he says, 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is any praise, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. What stirs a person to good works but a faith call to excellent living for an excellent God? We get to serve. Jesus set the example. Paul, as he writes here, he sets the example. And then he says, do as you have learned, as you have seen, as you have heard. So now we're being challenged to set the example for other people. And we do that by serving. People will see our faith through serving so that we can say, not I, but Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. So why do we serve? Because we get to. It's literally that simple. We serve a good God. We sing of his worth, his value, his praise, his love, the way he works in our lives. He deserves our excellence in serving. And others should know about the love of Christ by how we serve them. Serving allows for both things to happen. There's this uh, spoken word piece. It's called Devotion by Beautiful Eulogy that I thought just fit so well with this sermon. And it says, Authentic faith is not merely believing in God. It is believing God, taking God at his word. Living in obedience to his revelation, whatever the cost, because you know deep down, in your bones that God will always do what he says, that his speaking is his doing. It is an abiding assurance in God and in his promises that animates us to persevere in our obedience to him. Then he asks this question, do you wish to be a more consistently obedient, courageous, and outspoken Christian? Then you need to strengthen your faith. Your faith instinctively strengthens in direct proportion to the expansion of the object of our faith. You expand your understanding of the object of your faith, and faith itself will obediently follow. What's the object of our faith? If we are believers, that's Jesus Christ and all of his promises. So if our faith is weak, it's due to the fact that we don't know the object of our faith well enough. But when Jesus becomes progressively bigger, or better yet, when our understanding of who he is progressively conforms to the reality, our faith will become increasingly stronger. But how does this happen? By immersing ourselves in the faith-arousing word of God. The same powerful word that long ago brought the universe to life is the same word that brings us to life and furnishes us with a faith that's truly and authentically Christian. Let's step into reality. And our reality and our view of Christ comes by getting into his word. And when we soak up his word, it compels us and motivates us to go and do. Because Jesus didn't take, but he gave. And so as we receive truths and value and worth and excellence from God word, God's word, it's not just for us. It's to be given back to people so that others can benefit. We were in staff uh, meeting this week and really just discussing this. We weren't discussing my message, but it just came up in, in conversation. It was like, how do we get ourselves to a place of serving? And really, uh, the first thing that came out was continuing and refining our faith in the Word of God, which is so awesome when I get to see on social media the posts of Hope Daily, soaping through the Scriptures, reading God's Word, one more thing motivating us to go back to the Scriptures. 
Rob, Rob's dedication to uh, building believers who refine themselves in a word and are biblically literate, he encourages that so much. You want to grow your faith? You want to know your God more? You want that reality to be true? Go back to the word of God. His opinion is what matters. Second thing that we talked about was just a quick action item of a prayer walk. A prayer walk, because as we dialogue and converse with God, especially out of what he's been uh, teaching us and caring for us through his word, we want to give to people. And I think if we walk out through our neighborhoods with a mindset of, Lord, would you just open my eyes? Would you just guide a conversation? Give me an interaction. I think he's going to be honored in that. And I think he will show himself true. Walk in our neighbors, neighborhoods, bring up our neighbors before the Lord. And wanting an interaction with someone to just be able to say, hey, how can I pray for you? Hey, what's heavy? What are you anxious about? Yeah, me too. But I know Jesus. And you can have that conversation. And then Three, being open to serving opportunities. I get it. Quarantine, lockdown, it's hard. But still being open to serving opportunities. Having a mindset, checking our hearts, doing things and having a desire to figure out a way to not even think out the box, because I don't even think we have a box in this day and age. I think right now it's just, what can we do, Lord? And as you do that, God's going to make a way for you to do. And start to build a mindset and a heart to serve so that when we come back together and we meet in a building, maybe, that we'll already have the mindset of, I want to do. I want to serve. I want to give. I want to grow the kingdom of God. It's a mindset. Serving is about an attitude. And the way you serve and how you serve shows how much you value Christ, which are big things. So why do I serve? Because I can. Because life is for service. I don't always get it right. Trust me, I know how to push somebody over. Forgive me. But our our God is a big God, and he deserves big things. And I'm going to do my best to do it big. I hope you'll join me in that same ministry and that your your testimony will say the same. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Again, our prayer is that you still feel close because we miss you. We really, really love you. And we are really looking forward to seeing all of you again, hopefully soon. And I hope... I pray that all of us are praying that it's soon as well. I also hope that you are praying for so many people that are being affected by this. That we're praying for our leaders, that we are praying for the medical workers, our frontline workers. Let's hopefully spend this time dedicated to prayer for so many people around us. And as Wilt said earlier, let's pray for our neighbors. Let's pray for our communities. Let's pray that God gives us opportunities to put into practice what we are hearing what we are studying, that we can be a light in the darkness to the world around us. Again, we really want you to fill out, let us know how we can be praying for you, what we can be doing for you. Let us know if there's needs or you need someone to come alongside of you. Please let us know on the form below, email us, whatever it is. But we want to be there for you. We love you. Hopefully we'll see you soon.